Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're returning to Strategic Command World War II, World at War. It is July of 1946, we're deep into the summer of the final year of the war. The game ends in 1947, and the European continent is unquestionably in the hands of the Axis. Russia has fallen, Spain has actually been conquered. Uh, we do have both Sardinia and Corsica in allied hands, and then we have Sicily largely in our hands, as well as North Africa, and we still hold Gibraltar. But everything else on the continent is in German hands. Uh, with that being said, the Germans have also launched an invasion of Western India, but they've been thrown back largely due to insufficient supplies. There's no railhead through Iran, so they're just going by road, and they don't have adequate headquarters support or supply centers pushed forward here. So we actually destroyed a Romanian army and a German heavy panzer unit as well. We're beginning our push out of India where we've got very good supplies, uh, against the Panzer Grenadier mechanized unit as well, and I'm hopeful that maybe if the supply situation maintains itself, we can defeat that unit in our next turn as well. In Eastern uh, British Asia, I guess, the Burma is being invaded by the Japanese with heavy air support from the Japanese, which has been a bit of a problem for us. We don't really have the ability to do much about it. The rain is helping minimize the impact of that air power, but they could definitely break out of uh, Eastern Burma and drive down toward Rangoon and take some key bases down there, or even threaten India, although they'd run into similar supply problems if they tried to drive into India as the Germans are in the other portions of India. China is almost entirely Japanese controlled. However, uh, we have managed to surround two Japanese armies in Western China in sort of this remaining pocket of China that hasn't fallen to the Japanese yet. And hopefully we'll be able to destroy both the 12th and 6th Japanese armies. The 6th army is incredibly experienced, but they are now completely cut off by the Goldman Corps and the CCC XXII Corps. I know that's Roman numerals, but I don't remember what the C is. Is that, is that, the, is that a 50 or is it? Is it 100? I, I'm not sure. Um, in any event, we've surrounded these two armies, battered them pretty good. If the Japanese shift their air power from the Burma front toward northern China, we could be in serious trouble, but for the moment, they haven't done that yet. And the one area that the war is going really well for us is in Japan, where we've taken, uh, we've taken Nagasaki, Hiroshima, Osaka, Kyoto, and we're now on the border of the western hex of Tokyo. Tokyo is a two-hex city, so the capital is located in the eastern portion of the city, but we are directly adjacent to the western portion of the city, and we'll begin the assault on that soon. Um, so we will go ahead and get started right away. We'll see if we're able to continue our assault into Japan. It is a bit of a meat grinder. It's a bit of a slog. Ideally, we'd flank Tokyo to the north by knocking out this marine and heavy artillery unit. But um, given time constraints, we may have to try going directly at Tokyo. We'll see what our air power can do next turn. Uh, once, uh, once you know, next turn might also be a good turn to just reinforce some of these tactical air units that have been taking some pretty heavy casualties trying to bomb the Japanese. But that's really our only way to unbuckle this front is by a combination of using our armor as well as using our air power. We probably need to wait one turn to refresh a lot of these units uh, and get their supply and, and, uh, and reinforcement levels back up before we begin that final assault, but we'll see how that works out. We've got a bunch of reinforcements coming, but I'm not actually sure if we have enough time to get those reinforcements into the, uh, into the Pacific Theater. I'm also curious about maybe landing at Vladivostok because Eastern Russia was given to Japan, so maybe trying to hit some other national morale centers wouldn't be a terrible idea, actually, uh, to see if we can't uh, maybe take Vladivostok, maybe make a landing at uh, Shanghai or Tsingtao. They're definitely garrison locations. Uh, but it might not be a terrible idea uh, to consider with some of these troops. Uh, because if the Japanese do lose Tokyo, their capital will fall back to Seoul. But if they lose like three or four national morale centers as well as Tokyo, their morale may drop so far that they surrender. In any event, uh, we're going to go ahead and hit the end turn button here for July 12th, 1946. We'll be moving into August of 1946 as we come into the end game for Strategic Command World War II World at War. Okay, so the land units continue to the west in the U.S., so we were transferring some units to the west coast from the east. It's going to take at least three turns to get them to the front in Japan, and that's the problem is because each turn is roughly a month. So if the game ends exactly in January of 47, we're going to be in some trouble. The good news is I don't think Germany is strong enough at this point 
uh, and doesn't have the time, I don't think, to land in England. We've been fighting a bit of a war of attrition at sea against the Germans, and their economy is so strong that they're going to win that war in the long term. But I'm not sure that they're going to ever really be able to launch an invasion of England because I just don't think they've got the time to whittle down the fleet. You can see there there's some German destroyers operating in the channel. The Japanese are moving some headquarters units operationally in Japan. That's what those rail icons mean. Awesome, Strider. Glad you enjoyed it. Okay, so the Japanese are going to reinforce those troops that are cut off. Fortunately, because they're cut off and have no supply, they were only able to tick one up the reinforcement ladder. So that's good news for us. Uh, Japanese tactical air has moved into the home islands. That could prove problematic for those naval forces of ours. Meanwhile, rocket attacks from the German V weapons continue. Japanese counterattacks against our lead paratrooper units there just outside Tokyo. The army that's cut off near Guizhou attempted to counterattack uh, the Chinese troops that are cutting it off, although they didn't really do a lot of damage. Meanwhile, the Japanese continuing their slog of an advance into eastern Burma to really little effect. Bad weather on that front also is going to prevent their air power from really doing anything. German panzers that we attacked on the northern tip of Sicily attempting to reinforce. It looks like some armor is attempting to move in through Iran toward uh, the Indian border. I think that's an interesting decision by the AI because I haven't seen any headquarters units there. And all those units there have been suffering attrition and have been really poorly supplied so it'll be kind of interesting to see if they actually try to drive in further. It could be an, uh, a rare opportunity for us to get the edge and, and really whittle down some of the German morale and give our own troops some morale bonuses by destroying you know, a, a good number of strong German units because their supply is so poor. One to one, the German units are always better than ours because their national morale of their country due to taking Russia and like all of Europe is like 137% compared to the British, which is like 50 and the Americans, which is like 70. But uh, if we if we start inflicting heavy casualties on them, that can give us a little bit of a boost in morale and also hurt their morale. So that could be good for us. Meanwhile, the Japanese are pulling their heavy artillery off the front line in Japan. Interesting that they left one of those hexes exposed along the coast there in northern Japan. So there's a little bit of a rearward movement. It makes sense for them to pull their artillery back, but it, it's interesting that they're leaving the hex open. Meanwhile, apparently there's a 10 turns remaining, so actually more than I thought. So it's giving us a 10 turn warning there. We're getting, some, we're getting some intel there on the Gulf of Amman. So the game must not end exactly in 1947. It must end in like the spring of 1947. Meanwhile, Japanese anti-aircraft. I think those anti-aircraft are too far north to protect Tokyo, so that's kind of interesting. I think if we have 10 turns, we should be able to, to at least take out uh, the Japanese home islands. Meanwhile, we've got three more cores that are all ready. I'm going to deploy those all on the west coast with the intent of launching a U.S. invasion in Korea. We'll pull one of the headquarters out of Japan and also uh, put them uh, toward Asia. Meanwhile, this... One fighter unit, I think, makes sense to operate into the Japanese home islands. We don't have enough fighter support there. We do have carrier fighter support, but it's really it's not good enough, frankly. All right, these guys are dug in at level three, so we need to use our tactical air to reduce that. Um, let's use our carriers first, because I think there's going to be any enemy interceptors, potentially. There are not. Okay. Well, we lost a couple of units there. They didn't lose their entrenchment. But we can go ahead and start bombard. Eh. I mean, kind of tempted to try and hit these. What's this situation? If I move... So I should... The problem is this armor. We don't, I, don't, I don't have room for these units to maneuver, really. I could use this turn, since I have 10 units to... Or 10 turns left, to completely reinforce these guys to like full strength. Maybe that would be the strategy I should go with. Um, that might be the better strategy at this point. Because this, well that armor can't reinforce anyway. But our ground units can. I kind of want to try and hit... I, I think we have enough time that we can try and hit the, the, the beginning of Tokyo here. 
uh, with the air power that we have. So let's bombard here. This will reduce their entrenchments. We're not going to do a lot of damage with our tactical air here, but it does reduce their entrenchments from three to two. Another attack airstrike will remove it from two to one. We also did do a little bit of damage with against them. From one, I think, to zero, although I'm not sure if a half-strength air unit will do it. It did. And then we'll just hit them again to hurt the morale. So these guys have no more entrenchments. Their morale is at 22%. We can start trying to attack with our ground units. I, I really would like to... Can I operate these guys? No. All right, I could attack with my airborne here. There's gonna be defensive artillery. I'm gonna pull these rangers out onto long range transports just to get them out of the way so I can back these guys up without doing like a, a swap here. Move this armor forward here. Eat some artillery. I'm not sure if I'll be able to move it back or not because, no, it won't let me. In any event, though, we did weaken this unit. And let's do this. I can't swap these guys out, right? Yeah. So we're going to reinforce this army to full strength. And then I'm going to... There's only a garrison in northern Tokyo. That's interesting. These guys don't have any strikes on them, do they? The Burma Corps does. We also got good supply. Hmm. But will it stay weakened? So if they, if they don't pull this infantry unit out, if they just reinforce it, it will stay weakened. What's the supply situation up here? It's not going to get any better. I think I'm going to move the armor just to free up a little bit of space, I guess. It can reinforce, but not fully. I want to move this headquarters unit into Kyoto. The problem is I just don't have enough I don't have enough room here to move these units around. Um I guess I should have uh, in retrospect I probably should have um All right, let's do this. All right, we'll push the front a little bit. Pull this armor back one, move this up here, move this headquarters to Kyoto, move this headquarters to Osaka. So that'll give us slightly better supply on the front line tomorrow. Um, we can use our strat bombers to hit the city, which will damage its ability to supply the units. So they'll lose a couple of supply points on that city as well. And we did a little bit of damage to the troops also. Hurt their morale and readiness. So they could swap a new unit in here, but I don't think they're going to. Their, their tendency has been to reinforce, which actually hurts the morale of the troops. I'm also curious if we can land some troops here where these Japanese engineers are. So I'm going to try and bombard these guys into oblivion and then see if I can't drop some troops there. Their supply situation won't be great, but it will be another sort of thing for the Japanese to worry about. And I can't bombard Tokyo itself. I could try and destroy the port. That would wreck their supply also. Hmm but I think I'd rather try and open up a front 
in northern, uh, just north, just east of Tokyo, I guess. What's these? There's more, the readiness is down to forty-seven percent. All right, London, the heavy cruiser. There's, they still have two entrenchment though. We'll see what these, what the Burma Corps can do. Not a whole lot, I guess. Can they? I want to know how to get another strike out of these guys. Do they have to like go back on transports or? I'm not clear on that. Okay. Let's pull this air unit back one and see if we can't move this headquarters forward. I'm, I'm just not really sure. So this is eight, seven. So if, and tomorrow it'll be eight, eight, six, five, two, seven. So this unit, this unit, this unit will all be able to fully reinforce. Um, the air units will as well, but I think if I move this headquarters closer, then we'll get yeah, so this will be eight. So we'll have a slightly better situation for these air units just south. We'll probably spend the next turn just reinforcing. I'm going to move my carriers here in escort mode to intercept enemy fighters or enemy shipping that might try and come through and land in southern Japan, I guess. Um, let's try and hit these Japanese Marines as well. We'll lose, a, we might lose a little bit in our air wing, but I want to try and reduce their readiness also in the event that they do swap this Marine unit in there. So I'm going to do some airstrikes on, on this Marine unit. Although if they, they move them, they won't be entrenched. So at least there's that. So the air, the aircraft carrier wings really don't do much against ground units. Early Sunday stream. Yep, they gone. By the way, thanks for the resub there. Nine months. Appreciate it, dude. All right. And then I'm going to go ahead and see if I can get... All right. These guys just arrived on rail. So is there a port they can get to? Doesn't look like it. They might be able to board transports from Los Angeles. Uh, meanwhile, this carrier is going to move up here. I actually kind of like the idea of starting the assault on Korea as soon as I can. I really need to reinforce these guys is what I need to do. I don't know that I want to put these Marines on transports, but it's probably the only way to get them into the action. Um, I'm assuming they'll be under air cover here, but we'll see. Just... Just a strategy lover. Fra, thank you for the follow. Man-made monster 1002, thank you for the follow. All right, so... You know, maybe a better strategy next turn would be to try and hit the artillery with naval vessels. Let's also do some recon north. So we can see the Japanese have troops pretty much all throughout Japan. So we move this guy. So if I bombard it, does it lose an intercept? It doesn't. Okay. Uh, did they get any more ships? They did not. All right. I'm not 100% sure what to do at this point. Tokyo is very narrow, but we do have a bunch of turns left still. So we've got 10 turns. Uh, the problem is once we get in uh, another month or two, the weather's going to start turning and it's going to prevent us from getting good air 
air cover. So I think next turn we really need to try and knock out this core here and take Tokyo. We might be able to do it, um, but we'll see. So either we'll reinforce next turn or not. If they keep this unit in the same spot, I think I'm going to keep... I'm going to reinforce all my tack airs except one, which will get rid, rid of the last entrenchment for the unit. And then we'll use our carrier air to try and lower the morale of the of the troops. Uh, do any of my ships have a strike left? We could try and go after the port, but it is a level 12 port, so attacking the port directly is probably a bad idea. Uh, I do have this carrier here. What if I try and bomb the port? Yeah, even the carrier aviation can't do jack against the port here. I guess we'll go after these guys. So you can see their readiness drop by 1%. Their morale dropped slightly as well. Um, these escort carriers are set to intercept. I think Kyoto's still rebuilding from us taking it. It supplies only two, so it should slowly tick up. I'm hopeful that the third Rangers and the Conga Force might get better, might get their strikes back by staying in a port, although the port here isn't going to be a level 5, so probably not. The Osaka port will be, so maybe they'll get their strike back. Because um, I'm thinking maybe a landing east of Tokyo or maybe against these, these artillery pieces north of Tokyo with the 2nd Marine Division. I'm really not sure. I'm very uncertain how to proceed there. Okay. Meanwhile, in Burma, under rain cover these Japanese units have basically no supply okay upgrade this core to AA level 2 that'll help against the Japanese who have a ton of air cover Meanwhile, we can see there are a bunch of German units stacked up here. I'm assuming they all basically have no supply. It's interesting that a level 1 mechanized unit supply, though, versus a level 8 of ours, and we can't accomplish anything on the offensive. So I think I'm actually going to pull these troops back and invite the Germans to advance into India with no supply. Maybe we can destroy them then. Carrier aircraft do better against artillery? Potentially. I'm not really 100% sure, to be honest. Carrier air is just generally much weaker than land-based air, which kind of makes sense. But also, like in the Pacific, I don't think that's true. But certainly in Europe, in terms of just sheer volume of air, you know, number of aircraft. All right. Um, so that's kind of it for the Pacific. So we'll move back to the Atlantic. Keep bombarding these German tanks with our heavy artillery. Reinforce our infantry there. Use our battleships against Cadiz again. Keep damaging that port. Uh, let's move our sub through the channel here and see if we can't scout anything out. So, no German warships here. Alright, trying to do some scouting, but our fighters are going to get intercepted. It's okay. So, no indication that the Germans are preparing any sort of invasion at the moment. Nothing outside of the port in Bremen itself. La Havre, uh, Amsterdam, Cherbourg, Brest are all empty of, of transports. So, I think what we're going to do is I'm going to prepare for a major naval battle in the north against the German fleet that's north of Norway. And I'm going to consider, you know, an invasion of the channel is pretty much out of the question at this point. But one thing we might be able to do is engage a big chunk of the German fleet and destroy it at sea. So that's what I'm going to focus on, especially now that I've got naval weaponry level 2. 
for the British. That's where I'm going to focus my effort. Fortunately, the American ships that have taken damage can't reinforce fully in British ports for whatever reason. The game just decides that's the way it works. Although apparently destroyers can, just not American heavy ships. Uh, this battleship can get elite reinforcements. You go, Texas. All right. Okay. Um. Upgrade these AA guns to level three. It's too bad our AA guns can't do jack against enemy rockets, but it makes sense. It's just unfortunate that they're so worthless against any, any enemy rockets. It will make Great Britain much harder for them to land on, though. Meanwhile, I think we're going to land with a big chunk of our... Let's actually get these guys ready. I'm not going to throw them on long-range transports quite yet, but I'm going to move a headquarter north. We're going to stage out of Edinburgh and Newcastle and Aberdeen. So we'll move this guy north, adjacent to Rawsyth. It'll be under Eisenhower. That's fitting. We'll move our armor north toward Aberdeen. We're going to have heavy tanks as well as the regular armored units. So we'll have two units stage out of Edinburgh, two units stage out of Aberdeen. Well, of army and armor. So we're going to have the 1st Rangers, the 10th Army, the 12th Army. The first heavy tanks, the second heavy tanks, and the first tanks. And we'll go for Oslo to cut off the German iron ore, which will hurt their economy. And then we'll probably need to land multiple landings. So I think what we'll do is we'll land in Christianstad and Bergen, use those rail lines to advance on Oslo with our armor. We'll land an infantry unit up at Trondheim, and we'll have a naval battle probably in the north area of the Norwegian Sea. We also do have mechanized units that can land out of uh, out of Inverness. Um, and then I suppose we could send the 81st. I don't know that they'd be able to paradrop at that range. But I'll send them north anyway just to see. Maybe out of Inverness they could land at Bergen. I'm not sure. Doesn't look like it. They're not on a rail line, so I can't operate them north. And we'll leave uh, Patton's HQ back here to support the air units. I don't have any real bombers that are going to be able to support. I guess since these naval units can't really do anything, or they can't reinforce any further at their current ports, we might as well send them out this way to prepare. Yes, the USSR is in Axis hands. Unfortunately. Do we want to move the heavy artillery as well for this landing? I'm not sure. Also, I forgot. We do have these tactical air units. Can we move them to Japan? We can. Nice. I'm going to do that. I'm going to operate this tactical air to Japan. It's a fully reinforced unit. I need that badly in Japan. I'm also going to move these blimps to Great Britain because we need to use them to scout out the German fleet. And then we've got the 3rd Marines and the 2nd Marines in the East Coast. I guess we'll throw them on long-range transports. They can be key elements of the landing rather than throwing them on transports. Try and drive these German subs back, and then we'll operate this fighter unit north to Scotland, where it'll provide some fighter cover for the fleet as well. All right, so these guys won't be able to move, really, for till next turn. It'll take two turns to get across the Atlantic. We lost a core to German subs last turn, so we'll need to use a little bit of uh, naval vessels to screen or to, to do some reconnaissance to try and spot uh, enemy subs. 
Maritime bombers will increase their naval range to try and see if we can't do some scouting before we send our ships across the Atlantic. Um, okay, so that's that. Meanwhile, we, did, we don't want to forget about the Chinese. So we've got these two Japanese armies surrounded. I don't know that I'm going to be able to destroy these guys. The special forces did some damage here. The youth army came in. Nice. And the Cyan Corps finished off that experienced Japanese army. These guys have no supply. Fuck. Well, shit. They're going to start losing attrition next turn. Maybe go to Goldmund and maybe they can pick supply there. Oh, they should have three supply next turn. Okay. So these guys might... Their supply, I think, will drop a little bit. Maybe not. But we did finish off one Japanese army there. What's the national morale situation for Japan look like? They're at 23% and holding steady. They just spent a bunch of MPPs last turn, about 700 points. I'm curious what they all spent it on. Maybe Navy? Meanwhile, since we've got 10 turns left, I guess a lot of the stuff that we purchased that we weren't sure if it was going to come into play will arrive in time. Uh, for the British... I suppose we could purchase one more anti-air to help defend the British Isles. I mean, the thing is, the anti-air will do really well at preventing the Germans from being able to weaken us with their aircraft. I guess maybe some artillery on the home islands would be useful if the Germans do invade. Frankly, just more troops, I assume. Or fighters, actually. The, well, that's going to take seven turns, though. The destroyer will take six. Motor torpedo boats, maybe? <laughs> they only take three, and they're cheap. They also can be used for ASW work, which the Germans have a shit ton of uh, subs. So that might be a cheap way to clear some of our sea lanes. Spend a bunch of... Spend some money getting a bunch of them. And I guess we'll just buy the last anti-air unit we can get. The British already have some fighters coming in our next turn, actually. Two meteor fighters will come in next turn, so that'll be good as well. Uh, it ends in, I guess, the spring of 47, uh, to answer your question. So the British are building a bunch of stuff. Americans are as well. We've got nine more turns left, so anything we build here, what would we, what would we want? We probably want things that would be able to operate across the ocean, although most of that stuff, we, we already built the max number of tack air and fighters, so we can't build any more of that. I guess for the Americans, motor torpedo boats, if we're going to try and clear out the German subs and try and use them across the ocean. They're kind of, I'm assuming they're more like Corvettes at this, at this stage if they've got level 3 ASW. So, purchased all three that we can get of that. Um, maybe some heavy artillery, I guess? Uh, the French are kind of conquered, so we can't really build anything. We have money for the French, but we can't actually use it. Unless we take Paris. Which, at this point, Germany's so strong, a land-based invasion of them is pretty much out of the question. Put this army unit in Portsmouth. Pull that headquarter unit back. Okay. Okay. So we're keeping a couple of naval vessels in southern England. We're going to move all the carriers north. And hopefully the weather holds and we can get a good, nice invasion of, of Norway. But I think that about does it for this turn. We'll see if we can take the western hex of Tokyo on the next turn uh, next time. But let's go ahead and move through to the end of this turn. And we'll take a look and see what happens as we move from August into October.
All right, everybody, that's going to do it for this episode of Strategic Command World War II World at War. We'll pick things up next time. But until then, this is the Historical Gamer saying once again thank you very much for watching, and until next time, I'm out.